Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Let us say now the Jubilate in unison. Be joyful, be joyful in, in the Lord, Lord all you lands. Serve, serve the Lord with gladness, and, and come before his presence with a song. Know, know this, this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Delight is upon the godly that are in 
to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in his power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let my Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of all that of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together say, for doing Canticle 8, the Song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretch forth your hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possessions. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord. The sanctuary, O Lord, Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, 
being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us join together doing Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory Glory to the the Father, and to the the Son, and to the the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading today comes from the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judean authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good morning. Peace be with you. Is it easier or harder to hear these words of Jesus in a situation like we are facing now? Are they so comforting that they soak into the skin like a balm? Or is your initial reaction that of disconnection and doubt? Do they seem to apply? On that first day of resurrection, the disciples were terrified, and with good reason. They suddenly found themselves the remnants of a thoroughly squashed religious revival slash political revolution. A week earlier, they had entered Jerusalem waving palms in a triumphal procession. And then, just a few days later, their leader had been publicly executed as a criminal and threat to the establishment. And so they fled in fear. They hid indoors in fear. And they locked those doors in fear. Those fears were justified. While the official Roman suppression policy was to crucify only the leader of a nonviolent movement, in contrast to max, mass executions of violent ones, that didn't mean other cruel punishments or deaths weren't in store for these followers at the hands of either the secular military or the religious temple cult, both of which had been powerful minorities oppressing the helpless majority for decades. They had probably also feared recognition and betrayal by all their fearful neighbors as well, just as Peter had experienced while he waited out Jesus' trial before the execution. And so in their fear, the disciples locked the door against evil, not realizing that it was God who wanted in so that he could get them out, out of the doors and out of their fear. Then Jesus comes and stands among them. There's no special effects here, just presence. He is with them, and they see him. He announces his presence with, Peace be with you. John tells us that the disciples rejoice when they see him. Yet there is an implication here, just as across much of John's telling, that the disciples' reaction means they're not understanding something properly because John, Jesus now repeats his pronouncement, and he adds to it. Peace be with you, he says, and then adds, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. This coming of Jesus is not for passive comfort, but for active sending out in compassion. Jesus seems to be saying that if you want peace, you have to give it to others. This is one of the passages in which we see the coming of the Spirit. In the book of Acts, it comes at Pentecost. In the book of John, there is a presence of the Spirit here and now as Jesus breathes directly on his apostles. And that is, this is the time when he makes them apostles. He sends them out. And he sends them out to be those proclaimers, those witnesses. And what is the main thing that he calls them to do, that he commissions them in this commission of John? It's about forgiving. He tells them that if they forgive, sins will be forgiven. If they refuse to give forgiveness, sins will will not be forgiven. They will be retained. They will be bound. Some read this as a statement of the power of the church, that certain clerics are enabled to forgive sins that others cannot. I don't personally see it that way. I see this as more universal in the sense of the, the priesthood of all believers, that forgiveness is something that enables us to be forgiven and for healing to come. If we don't give forgiveness out, healing will not come for either ourselves or others. In the words of one of the commentators in this passage, forgiveness heals and releases the forgiven, and not only the forgiven. Even if the one to be forgiven does not know she is forgiven, 
Yet for the one who forgives, a burden is lifted and discarded. If real and hurtful sins are not forgiven, however, then they remain and are held fast. They mutate the minds of perpetrator and victim alike, so that both tenaciously recycle their anger, rage, hatred, resentment, and delusion. And this is what the disciples are at risk of. Jesus sees that what the disciples fear, the physical repercussions, is less something to fear than the peace that they are missing out on by giving in to that fear and by holding on to their anger, their resentment of all those who have done them wrong. It does not mean to negate what they've done wrong because they have done wrong. But by holding on to this, by retreating and saying, we're going to stay within this fear and this is how we're living, they've chosen a prison that Jesus says is not the path of his people. And so in this story, Jesus comes into a locked room to send his people back out into the world. Now, it can be tempting to try to make some parallels with this pandemic situation. And no, I am not suggesting we leave our houses. That's not the point. The point is not to go out and be fearless in spreading disease. However, there is a fear that we have right now as church people all across this country, particularly those of us who love the tradition and liturgy in our churches, the tradition and that is, we hide away and say, where, where is that comfort that we had before? The comfortable services, the good music, all these good things that are within our box, within our church building. And now we can't get those, at least not very well. We're doing our best here, but it's not the same. We all know that. And so maybe we could see a little bit of a parallel here where Jesus is saying, don't just hunker down and wait until this is over, but go out and be church with people in the ways you can. Worship outside the box. Forgive outside the box. Find ways to look at the hurts you've had during this time. There are people out there that have done wrong to us, and that is not to be dismissed. And yet, if we hold to that, we are in a worse prison than being simply isolated at home. So I think as we go through this season, we should be reflecting on this passage in the sense of, how do we go out and be those forgiving people, releasing sins so that all can be healed? Because it is in this participation, the forgiveness that Jesus models is the one that he asks us to be part of as well. It is not something that he simply does and says it's done and everything's fine and you can stop now. He says, now that I've done this, it's a pattern for you to do as well. Just as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And this is often a hard teaching and a hard way to follow. But as Psalm 16 has said, this is the path of life. There is goodness, there is joy in this if we but trust and walk outside those locked doors of our hearts and our minds and our tradition and say, what more does God have for us when we let go those things we have been retaining? Amen. Standing now, let us recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, You have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us rejoice in the living hope that has been given to us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, as we respond to each petition by saying, Hear us. O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for the fellowship we share with Christians throughout the world who hold high the light of Christ that overpowers death and reveals the promises of God's eternal reign, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. Grant us your abiding and merciful presence so that in the time of trial we will not be shaken but may walk the path of your glory to the fullness of your joy, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. Show us your wounds, that we may see your face in the faces of the poor and hungry, the abused and rejected, the lonely and despised, and respond with the sacrificial generosity by which you redeemed humanity from sin and evil. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. Help us to be a people of forgiveness, moving beyond our feelings of betrayal and rejection, to forgive those who have pierced our hearts, and to receive forgiveness from those whom we have wounded, so that together we may receive the victory of love for which Christ gave his life. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. Direct the church on the road to mutual respect, fidelity, and peace, honoring different cultures, languages, races, and peoples so that we may discover the beauty of the global community for which Christ stretched forth his arms of love. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. Bread of life and cup of our eternal joy, fill us with these riches of your grace, that we may know your constant presence with those who dwell on earth and with those whose dwelling place is in paradise. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. 
In companionship with all the baptized, let us continue our prayers. We pray now for those on our prayer list. Tom, Lynn, Colleen, Marion, Shirley, Marty, Mason, Jay, Jerry, Lauren, Odell, Irene, Rich, Kevin, Rayland, Mike, Alicia, Lee, Doug, Amina, Ray, Aaron, Chris, Donna, Barbara, Joyce, Sydney, Elsa, Joe, Julius, and Anne. For all who have died in communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Hear us, O risen Christ. We also pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mike, our bishop, John, our priest, and Al, our deacon. On the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Christ Memorial, Williamstown, Grace Church, St. Mary's, and St. Anne's, New Martinsville. And in our companion diocese in Colombia, we pray for the Reverend Jorge Martinez, Mission Santa Maria Virgin. may offer additional prayers at this time, silently or aloud. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Number 192.
Turning now to page 101, we recite the general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now recognize uh, birthdays and anniversaries in our church. Today we have the birthday of Jason, anniversaries of John and Carol, and Jeff and Kathy. Please join together first as we say the birthday prayer for Jason. Gracious Jesus God, as we rejoice in the birthday of this your child, we pray that the year ahead will be one of blessing and peace, and that the year will bring continual joy in the knowledge of your steadfast grace and love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. And now for John and Carol, Jeff and Kathy, we pray the anniversary prayer together. Loving God, you have blessed these couples with the gift of marriage. We pray that they may continue to love and cherish each other, and that they will find in each other the reflection of your abiding and sustaining grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now for announcements. Um, so we are continuing to do um, online services, and as you've seen today, uh, working, still working out um, issues and learning things as we go. Um, looks like we'll probably be trying to do live, uh, pre-recorded messages in the future rather than live streaming as we're having some difficulties getting the live streaming to work with the internet. Very grateful for Bill Howler to be playing with us today. Um, I know many of you have expressed your appreciation for the music and he has been delighted to be part of this. And so we are just all very grateful that Bill can be continuing to play with us while continuing to keep it as safe as possible for him. We will be having um, a, uh, two evening services this week, Tuesday and Thursday. The time is changing from 7 to 7.30, a little bit later in the evening. As the time gets later, we try to get this around sunset for evening prayer. Um, but also maybe that would be a chance for those with children to maybe have things a little quieter and after dinner possibly will help uh, if those people would like to be part of it. That will be on YouTube um, live streamed at 7.30. Um, lasts about half an hour and that goes um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then next Sunday we will have a new schedule. We'll be adding in a book study. Um, so go ahead and pick up um, the book Wisdom Jesus by Cynthia Bourgeau. Um, if you're looking at the spelling, um, you'll notice it's French. So I, I really have no idea how the French pronunciation and spelling work together. I just know that it's Bourgeau and you can look up the spelling in the, uh, in the email. And uh, she is an Episcopal priest and retreat leader who does a lot of work in helping us see 
um, Jesus as a teacher of wisdom and a, someone who gives us a path along which to walk. Um, we will be trying to get a hold of this book. Um, everyone reach out. Uh, Amazon is, a, is right now a difficult place to get things on time for books. Um, I recommend Thrift Books or this new bookshop.org as attempts to get a book. And for this next week, since not everyone may have it, we'll be looking at the, pro the prologue, the very beginning of the book, um, and talking about it in general. So that way, if you don't have a book quite yet, we'll start our first chapter the following week. That'll be at nine o'clock in the morning, and then we'll have our pre-recorded stream ready to go for you at 10 and our coffee hour at 11. Please reach out as you have any need for pastoral care, for um, any help with groceries, anything that you need. Um, we want to continue trying to offer as much support as we can during this time. Um, I am available by cell phone and by FaceTime and by video chat and by Facebook Messenger and many different ways. Please reach out. I would love to be uh, able to simply have a chat with you to, um, to catch up to talk over spiritual matters, to do many things. And so just uh, get in contact with me and I'd love to be part of that with you. I believe that's all of the announcements. And so in conclusion, glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever, amen.